Hello, screenwriters, and welcome to Writing for Screens, Ask Me Almost Anything. Today's main question will be, what if I just have an idea for a movie? My name is Glenn Gers. I am Writing for Screens. I make it, I do it, I thought it up, I gave it to you. Uh, what I'm doing here is uh, the things that I learned in a 25-year career writing for TV and movies. I am trying to leave them behind the tools, the skills, the uh, insights, some basic concepts that I think you can use. You have to figure out whether or not they are right for you. Let me talk a little bit about the channel. Uh, this is a little screen capture of the channel main page. If you will notice down towards the bottom here, eh, <laughs> there it is. Uh, eh, that, those three playlists. There's these three playlists. Uh, they are screenwriting here. I'll give you a close up of those. Screenwriting essentials, screenwriting tools, skills, and craft, and the process, being a writer. What these are are 10 minute ish videos that I have constructed to try and give you some very, very clear, simple, useful ideas. They are not a system, they are not the rules. Everybody has to figure out their own way of being an artist. These are just some tips and tricks and skills that I learned while figuring it out for myself in the business and in the art. When I am on my way out of the business because I am retired, I thought, I was going to, I, I don't know why, I just wanted to share them. So I've put them into these videos. There's about 50 of them in those three uh, playlists. 50, free, for you, anytime, 24 seven. So please check them out because anything you wanna know about what I think about writing, probably gonna be somewhere in those videos. Uh, but on the other hand, I also have these live streams every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time Zone. I come on live. I generally have a topic to talk about, and then I do some Ask Me Anythings, talk about whatever's going on. Um, today's topic is, what if I just have an idea for a movie? What if I can't or won't or don't think I could write a script, but I've got this idea that I think is so good? We're gonna talk about that, uh, but first I'm gonna do some quick hellos because I got lots of people saying hello to me here. Hello, Nathan. Hello, Jay Mario. Uh, yes, it's great to see you today too, Nathan. Hello, Donna and Doug and A. <laughs> A, um, uh, A Link and Doreen, how are you? Uh, Michael, last week paid $169 to experience Las Vegas 2.0 four billion dollar movie theater it was okay um, yikes uh, I I don't uh, at the end of, of today's lesson uh, I might want to hear more about that because I don't know what that is um, hi Helene hi thumper and happy New Year's to you happy New Year's to everyone um, hello Darian and Willie Willie have I have I seen you before hi uh, Michael. I'm so thankful we live in an era where knowledge like this is free. Yes, thank you. Thank you for, for appreciating, because honestly, if I wasn't getting some kind of feedback here and people telling me that it was useful, I would stop because, you know, it's work. Hi, Gene. Hello, Mark Strain. Very nice to meet you. Okay, here's the deal. Let's get right into this. Let me, I want to get into this topic. I want to get it across, and then we will do questions. Okay, good. Here's the question. Um, I got an email from someone who I will call E. Um, uh, it was it was a really good email, and I I actually um, I actually answered it incorrectly. I, I I skimmed the email. I didn't I didn't really understand the question, and so therefore I answered the question I thought that E was asking was um, what do I do if I've got this great idea and I think I, it's going to be my first script, um, and what's what are my options? Um, that's not the question. The question was much better than that. Um, here, here, I'm just going to read some selections from this email. Had an idea for a screenplay. It's, it's a psychological thriller. However, while I am passionate about this idea, I lack the experience and expertise in screenwriting. I've never written a script, and my current commitments make it challenging to dedicate time to learning this intricate art form from scratch. I love this because it is showing respect for the difficulty and complexity of this weird art form I am here to talk about. Uh, so the question is, 
respecting how stupid and tough the business is and how demanding the art form is, I'm curious what options might exist for someone in my position. Wonderful question. Is it feasible to sell a screenplay idea to a studio or a screenwriter? Or perhaps is there a way to collaborate with a professional writer who can bring this vision to life, ensuring the story gets the treatment it deserves? I'm open to different avenues, whether it's a partnership or a different route that I might not be aware of. This is so, so well worded, so well thought out to say, I recognize the situation. The situation is like saying, hey, I've got a great uh, idea for how to run the country, but I'm probably not going to get to be the president. So what can I do? with? Because it's still a good idea. I understand that the industry is competitive and ideas can often bear similarities. My primary goal is to see this concept materialize on screen, capturing the essence of the story I envision. I would greatly appreciate any advice or insights you could offer. E, <laughs> uh, thank you for this excellent question. Let me get into it. Um, okay, here's the deal. The first thing I want to say is the things I am going to say are not definitive. Nobody knows, okay? As William Goldman, the famous screenwriter, famously said, nobody knows anything in this business. So therefore, although I am going to say it is very, very difficult, I am going to say, is it impossible to sell an idea to Hollywood or to the film industry? It's not impossible. Who knows? Who knows? You never know. Um, the business also is changing. And for all I know, in the past five years or so, it's changed. I am not, you know, day to day in it. This is my advice, my observations, my experience. Uh, it is not for me to say what you should do. This is going to be my take on this issue. First point, though, is important to know, because this is a legal issue. You cannot own or sell an idea. Um, it has to be in a form. Th this is crucial to understanding being an artist. <laughs> um, uh, an idea is not copyrightable. The, the, the ownership of intellectual property the ownership of stories, it only exists legally in the form of copyright. Important. This is not legal advice. I am not a lawyer. But as I understand it, you can't own an idea. You can't own a story unless you put it in a form that can be captured and, and registered in the Library of Congress in America, different places. Countries have different rules, but the basic concept of copyright means that y you could have the greatest, you could have the whole story in your head, you could tell someone that story. You don't own it unless you have put it into a form, a, a physical form, a mechanical form outside of yourself in your head that can be captured. Okay, that's the first thing. Um, it can be in the form of a script, it could be in the form of a written treatment or story or a pitch. Uh, yeah, in theory, you could record the pitch and copyright the recording. Um, it has to be, have enough specifics to make it unique. The thing is, if you said, I really think it would be cool. My idea is a science fiction epic with this young hero who takes a journey and learns to, uh, to embody his abilities. That's too vague. That's too many stories. Um, it has to be specific, it has to be unique, it has to be captured in your specific language. Okay. <laughs> Gene is saying great legal non-advice because I believe Gene is a lawyer. <laughs> um, yes, yes, exactly. Form, tangible expression. Um, I don't offhand know the exact definition of tangible in the sense that, but, but, um, but something that, because it could be digital. I mean, you could have a digital file uh, which you can't tang, you can't tangible that, but it is in an existing form that can be communicated to the Library of Congress and other such places. Um, so the first thing you need to think about is how specific and detailed is your idea? How, how much have you worked on it? Could you write your idea out as a story, as a, a treatment, which is a prose version of a screen story? Um, but no matter what the form is that you're going to try to capture this idea and own it in order to sell it or communicate it to people who might do it, you're going to have to develop the characters and the story enough to have that be 
distinctive, unique uh, yours. Um, so let's talk about what those things are that you have to develop, what you, what you have to figure out. Um, you need to know the genre. You need to know the main characters. Um, and by the way, when genre, I, I'm not talking about specifically sticky, like it, it could be a space western. It could be a romantic comedy uh, animated fish story. I don't know. I'm saying whatever it is, you need to know what type of story it is. That's helpful. Um, it's helpful to know the main characters and the world or situation that they are in and the main problem they face and the main actions that they take to overcome that problem or to get their goal and how it resolves. Now, many of you may be thinking, gee, Glenn, that sounds a lot like something you talk about in general, which is the six essential questions of screenwriting, according to me. This is a video, I'm, I'm putting this up here and I will put a link in the description uh, when this is over. Um, six questions, I make a note, because when this is over, I will, I will put the six questions video link in the description. Um, but the point is, I, I try and talk about uh, this idea of what defines, what is the basic way to ask yourself, what do I know about this story? It is not a test for whether or not you have a story. It is not a form for, formula, format for a story. It's just questions to ask yourself when you are figuring out what the story is, okay? Now, you might have a great situation. For instance, to take one that already has been made great, um, a, a an embittered, brilliant chemistry professor in high school in New Mexico um, discovers that he has terminal cancer and decides that he can provide for his family after his passing by cooking, uh, cooking, uh, chemistrying up, some methamphetamine, which is highly saleable in this world that we live in. The point is Breaking Bad, okay? Uh, you may only have that, the, the, the beginning of Breaking Bad. That's the, that's the pilot episode. That's the first hour um, of, of a 65-hour story. But maybe that's all you've got. Um, maybe all you have is a great twist at the ending. Oh, it turns out that his cat was really his brother. Um, you know, something like that. <laughs> I don't know how that one works, but you get the idea. My point here is that these um, characteristics, these pieces of the story, if all you have is the twist or all you have is the setup, you haven't really developed a story yet, a story with a beginning, a middle, and end, a character who wants something and tries to do something about that want. That's my, my advice is, even if you're not a screenwriter, you still want to at least try to develop that a bit. Now, <laughs> let's talk about what that means. Um, and also, let's talk about the fact that if you were to do that, that doesn't mean you can necessarily get it made the way you see. Um, because one of the things that he asked is, I want to see this story made in the, on the screen. I want to see it go through that process. In that process, other people are going to come into it and they are going to mess with it because that's what creative collaboration is. Um, but, but before I get into that, oh, let me just uh, do some questions. Uh, if it's an idea, it can also be a novel and you would be able to self-publish it. Yes, Pergandy, once again, is speaking my mind. Very often, Pergandy does this. Um, yeah, and we'll get into that in a bit. Um, yeah, there are many forms that an idea can take, and I urge you to recognize that some of them are more within your abilities than others. Um, no matter what, you would need to get it into a verbal, written ideally, form, um, which could be called just a story. You just write it as a story, maybe five pages uh, typed. Um, that can be called a treatment in the business. In the, in the movie industry, uh, a treatment is a prose description of a story, of a script to be. Um, so, so the question then becomes, how do you write a treatment? Um, because a treatment you can A, copyright, and B, sell. You can sell a treatment and they will then develop a script out of it. Um, but in order to write that three pages or five pages or even 10 pages, whatever it is that you feel you've got in you, 
um, the, the issue that you have to do is you're still going to have to think out the story. You have to figure out who your character is and what they want and what their problem is and what they do to get it and how it ends. Those six magical questions again. I got to do it. I got to do it. Yeah, six questions. Okay, um, but what's the? how do you write that? What is that? Um, there are many, many forms of treatment. I hate treatments. I feel that treatments are evil. Treatments are a way that producers um, try to get you to do all the work before they pay you. <laughs> treatments are the way that people take um, something complex and shifting like a, a script and try and summarize it into an easy thing. However, it is a useful way to capture an idea that you don't really have the ability or skill or knowledge to develop yourself. Tell the story on paper, three to five pages if you can. Um, try and figure out the main beats of the story, the, the main uh, actions, uh, the, the big twists if there are any, or the big developments or the big changes or the big challenges, whatever it is, and the ending. Um, there is no standard format for this. Um, if you go on the internet, you will see tons of videos and articles and things, how to write a treatment. They will all be different because, as I have said to you, there are no rules for screenwriting. So the answer is figure out the way that you, comes naturally to you that you can do, figure out the way that you uh, like, and do it. Um, likewise, pitching. A pitch is a verbal version of a treatment. <laughs> okay, that's what a pitch is. A pitch is something that came about um, because professional writers were thinking, I don't want to write a story. I have an idea for a story. I don't want to write it if they're not going to pay me for it. I have my problems with that too. <laughs> but, um, but the point is that what ha would happen is the, the writer would say, I'm going to go to the people who buy stories and I'm going to tell them the story in five to 10 minutes um, as much as I've got it worked out. And they're going to say, I get it. I will write you a check to write that script. That's what the original pitching concept was. That is still somewhat done, but, but less. Um, very often what they'll say is, uh, yes, go write the treatment or go write the script and then we'll pay you. But, but now pitching has also become its own industry, its own business in which people who are not professional screenwriters will get a chance to, in a condensed verbal version, tell a producer's representative or agent's representative or somebody, tell the story and there's these contests and these pitch festivals. Um, I'm going to ask you to be very, very wary about pitch contests and pitch festivals because honestly, most of them are kind of scammy in the sense that the odds of your pitch getting picked up are very, very slim. The people who actually are attending those almost always are not important in the companies they work for. In other words, they will send a, a lesser person to hear out these pitches on behalf of the company on the off chance that one is super great and they may take that to their bosses, but they don't have authority to buy anything. Okay, now and then you will get some major, major person coming to do a pitch fest. I don't know why they would do that unless they were being highly paid or something, but the main thing about that is even then, the odds of you getting anywhere with that pitch are very, very, very slim. Um, one of the biggest problems with that is if you were to get the break, if you were to pitch a story in a pitch festival and the you happen to get the person who could give it the green light and say, yes, I will write a check for you to write that script. Um, uh, you're probably not ready. You're not a professional and you would still have to become a professional to do the work involved in writing the script or in rewriting the script if it was already written. My main point is that the, the business of pitch festing, I believe, is, is a it becomes a full-time occupation unto itself. It can be fun, but the set of skills that are required for pitching need to be devoted to just as much as the set of screenwriting. Might as well learn to screenwrite. Um, and not everyone can do that. You, you may not be the sort of person who can pitch a story, but you might be able to tell a story. So, so I, I just ew, feel icky about pitch fests um, and contests ordinarily. I, I can't say I've 
I don't know that much about them, but overall, they are suspicious to me. Um, I'm going to quickly take a break here to, to check out some of these questions. Okay. Um, how wary are you to tell others about the plot you are writing? This is a good um, related question, and I will I will talk about that in a minute. Thank you, Helene. Um, take the idea and tell a story. That is exactly my main advice. Um, that's what I'm getting at, is that you have to find a way to tell this idea in the form of a story. Now, that story could be something you tell someone you know, sitting down and telling them for five minutes, or it could be something you write down. It could be something you write down as a 30-page intricate, ornate story. That's great, too. Doesn't matter. The point is, put it into a form of storytelling. Do treatments cover the entire script, or is it more of a summary? Do you have a video for this? No, I do not have a video for this because I hate treatments, um, and, and I'm very, very reluctant to, to advise the, that you do them. Um, my, my answer would be yes. In theory, the, the treatment covers the entire script, not every word, because if it's every word, it would be a script. <laughs> so it is a summary. It is a step-by-step -step walk through the amount of story that you have developed. But here's the, the tricky thing about treatments. This is why I hate them. If you actually do the work to do a beat-by-beat -beat treatment of every beat that would be in the script, you've done the outline of the script. You've gotten well past halfway to writing a script. Um, that's an enormous amount of work. The whole point about a treatment is it should summarize. It should say, well, they're going to get themselves into a race, and then they end up in the sewers, and that's where they get split up. And But you're not going to work out every detail of it so that you can tell. The, the treatment should read pretty fast. Like I said, three to five pages seems like a good thing. But it should tell the beginning, the middle, the end. It should tell the main characters. It should tell the main story events or points. Three to five pages. Double spaced, maybe space and a half. I don't know. Anyway, um, when we explain, sometimes sometimes we give an analogy. That is true, um, uh, but but it not that related to the um, the idea to treatment concept. Um, okay, um, let me just quickly quickly go on a bit with my ideas, and then I'll come and talk to, about these because these are good questions and notes. Okay, so. Uh, the point is, treatment, a written treatment, three to five pages, is a, a decent way to formulate the, the idea into a story. Um, try to tell it as engagingly as you can, but obviously it's, it's, this is a hard art. Um, I, would, I would personally stay away from editorializing, talking about other... And this is where the treatment business gets tricky, because there are many people who say you should talk about... Uh, other roles that it's like. You should mention other movies, blah, blah, blah. I don't think so. I think you should just tell the story. Tell the characters, tell the world, tell the problems, tell the goal, tell what they do and how it ends. That's what I think a good treatment should do. Um, but many people disagree. Many people believe there's a razzle-dazzle to it. We agree to disagree. Um, or it depends how professional you want to be, how much of a sales document you're making. The, the next step of this question is, what do you do with it? When you've got it, can you find an established writer to take on this thing? The answer to that is usually not, because here's the deal. Screenwriters generally write for money, <laughs> or they write their own ideas. That's the two things that screenwriters do. But most of the time, screenwriters are writing for money. <laughs> they will, they, it's a job that they do. So if you come to them and say, here's an idea, and if you take this idea and you do all that work, you may be able to sell it and we can split the money. Um, if the idea is really remarkable to this person or they just have a personal reason to do it, in theory they could do that, but most of the time they've got a backlog of their own ideas they want to do. And if they're not, they are working with a company that's going to say, we are going to put down an extraordinarily large amount of money for you to write this script. So that's what they're going to do. So if you were to find a writer. It's not like writer, writers don't go to the public for their ideas. So therefore, um, there's no known way for someone to say, hey, I've got an idea. Would you, established writer, take it on? There, there's no place for that. What you would have to do is find the name of a writer who you think would be good at, it, which means you would have to 
no screenwriters. And I, most of you out there, you don't know screenwriters. And if you do, you know celebrity screenwriters. You know Eric Roth and Scott Frank, and, and, and that's all. It, it's not, they are unlikely to be interested in some unknown person's story idea. Because I guarantee you, even I, who is small potatoes in the film business, has people coming up to me all my career saying, I'm a foot doctor, I'm a podiatrist, but I had this idea for a story. Let me tell it to you. I bet we could make a lot of money together on it. Um, I have had a lot. And the uh, yeah, there's a lot of good ideas out there. A lot. Ideas are not generally the best thing. I, I've talked about this and I think the idea is not the key to a good script. Uh, ideas are, are the things that, that producers sell each other. But the actual work of writing a script, the characters, the storytelling, the story events, that's what writing is. And that's what writers care about. So, but suppose you found a writer, you chose a writer, you would contact their agent. You'd have to find out who is Scott Frank's agent. Scott Frank is a bad example because he's not going to do it. But um, who is so-and-so's agent? Then you would send that person an email and you would say, hey, I have this great idea. I would like to uh, try and team up with your writer. I'll provide the idea. They provide the writing. Together, we will take Hollywood by storm. The agent is probably not going to want to do that because you're not offering any money. And they can turn around and say, if we ignore that person and we go to the company, the company has their own ideas. Every movie company is coming up with ideas or buying project ideas from books and plays and things. And so they are coming to writers and saying, we have this book and we want you to adapt it. So the agent is saying, I could take this idea from this person who's nobody and with no money and have my person work six months to a year on it to make it and then we might make some money. Or I can go to a company that already has an idea and that will pay them a fortune up front to write a script. Which one is the agent going to do? Which one is the agent never going to even tell their writer exists? You. Because there's no money in it. So that's the, the biggest problem with professional writers is they work for money. Um, if you were to come up with an idea that was so unique, um, it, it first of all, if it's really, really unique, it probably is hard to express its coolness. For instance, there's a movie called Pig, which I just adore. Pig stars Nicolas Cage, indie movie from about two or three years ago. Astonishing movie. Great idea. Like an idea you wouldn't, like <laughs> that's an idea that I have never heard before. Um, it's about a guy who has a truffle hunting pig and the, the pig is kidnapped. Um, it's an extraordinary story and an extraordinary uh, uh, work of art. Um, if you, it, yes, if you wrote that as a three to five page story and conveyed the depths of it, the complexities of it, um, ideally, as a screenwriter, I would be like, wow. Except honestly, it would have to connect with me deeply personally. Otherwise, I'd be like, I don't know how to do that. It's really cool. But if I hadn't seen Pig and somebody told me about Pig and said, you want to write Pig, I wouldn't know how because I, that was that artist, that artist who wrote and directed that movie. Um, so that's the problem with trying to collaborate with a, 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 a professional writer. Um, furthermore, if you were to collaborate with a professional writer, most of the time, professional collaborations in the movie and TV industry is basically one person taking the other person's stuff and then pushing them aside and doing what they want with it. That is most of the time. Now and then you get a true collaboration, you get actual shared creativity, and it is a beautiful thing and wonderful. 90% of the time, it's one person taking the other person's work and doing their own version of it, um, which would not satisfy most of you. Um, or, or anybody. It's a horrible experience. So uh, briefly, then I'll get to your comments. Who do you sell a story to in theory if you had a story idea and you put it in the form of a treatment and you could get it to them? Producers or production companies, which includes the producing divisions of studios or networks or streaming services. They have offices where they have executives whose job is 
to read scripts or to read books and see if they should be made into scripts. And they're, they're the story idea departments. There are whole companies there as a producer, your job is to find that material, get that script written, and then put the actors in it and get the money and get it made. That's who does that. Producers, production companies, studios, networks, streaming services. Here's the problem. They will not meet with a civilian, with a non-professional. Uh, they will not read anything uh, unless it is submitted by an agent, a, which means you have to be a professional to have an agent. Um, I've done a video on agent. I don't know if I've got... Yeah, yeah. It's called How to Get an Agent. Um, and the answer is you can't get an agent if you are not a professional writer. Um, um, so the answer is because the, the companies can't be reading all this stuff from the people who have ideas because there's just too many of them. Everybody has a story to tell, and I do not mean that in a bad way. That's why I'm here, to help you have stories to tell, to figure out how you're going to tell it in your way, and that's what I'm going to talk about now. Um, but as far as the companies go, they can't be bothered with people who are not at a professional level. They are, they are afraid of losing their own jobs. They're afraid of their company going out of business. They can't be like, hey, let's help this person who kind of has an interesting idea but doesn't really know what to do with it. Um, it's just a waste of their time. There's already more scripts written by professionals than they could read in a lifetime. There's so many scripts, so many books, so many plays. They can't possibly consume them to figure out which one they want to do. Um, but there's also just a legal issue. If you were to show them your story idea, and it happens to be something that then they later see from a professional, and this does happen, you know? You get an idea, somebody else gets a similar idea, you'll sue them. You know, they say, oh, we don't want to do yours. Later, they read a brilliant script by a, a professional writer, has a similar element. You sue them, they have a miserable time. So they just don't look at yours. They don't open the, the email. They don't look at the uh, material that comes from people who are not submitted by an agent because agents protect them from that liability. So the question then is, we're, we're wrapping up here, then I'm going to get to your comments. Is it hopeless? Um, kind of, in one sense. It's hopeless in the sense that if you want to have your idea made into the big screen, you're probably not going to be able to do that. Um, it, it, I, I don't like to say it's impossible. You never know. You could meet someone and your dry cleaner works with Nicolas Cage's dry cleaner and <laughs> they are friends and you pass this idea and they say, oh, I'll tell them. And they tell Nick and Nick says, I want to hear that. And he takes it to his producing company. Um, that's possible. It happens. But most of the time, you truly don't have a chance to get into the business as a amateur, as a dilettante, as a, as a visitor. Um, because it's a hard, complex, competitive business with a lot of high stakes. Um, and, and that's not great. It's not fair. It may, we may be losing out on some great stories, but that's the way the business works now. So let's talk about what to do with this frustration you feel, because it's a good frustration. It means that there's a good thing happening inside of you. You, are, you thought up a story. Yes, that's good. Um, the thing is... Creative people mostly spend their time imagining things they can't do. I constantly am thinking of movies that I can't get made. I am constantly, I would love to write a musical. I would love to write all these things that I'm probably not going to get to do. Um, that's what creativity is. Creativity is not saying, oh, what's the market? What's the, the slot I can fit into? They're saying, ooh, what do I think of? That's great. Don't throw that out just because it's hard to get it into the professional business. See if you can put it into a form and pursue it. Um, so, so this is what I would say about that. Um, try to work out the heart of your story and find a form. Try and figure out the beginning, middle, and end. Try and figure out what the events, the big events are of your story and who these people are. Think about them. Try and write down in some form. Um, if that form is a monologue that you want to do as a, a play, if it's a, a pitch that you want to do in a 10-minute form, if it's, if it's a graphic novel or a video game or, or just a short story, 
find some form that you can do without getting the approval and permission of a bunch of people who are trying to figure out what the next big thing is. Because they're bad at that anyway. And, and they make your life miserable. So just start with, with finding the heart of your story, the characters, the things they do, the way they are, the, the, the things that they want. Figure out how your story is going to end and then put it in a form, even if it's, even if it's a poem. Right, right. Uh, just like, like you know, like the poem that you wrote when you were in love and you wanted to express your feelings to someone who wasn't paying attention to you. Write it down. Get something out there. That's the main thing. Do something with this dream you've had. And by dream, I don't mean wish to accomplish. I mean imagination. Thing that you thought up. This this story in your head. Find some way to do something with your dream that you can do and do it for you. Maybe you'll be able to find a theater company that'll put it on. Maybe you'll find a writer who loves it. Maybe you'll find some unemployed pre-professional writer, excuse me, and they will say, oh, I love this. I'll work for free on it. You never know. But only if you put it into a form can it exist and you can copyright it so that if you write it as a story or somebody does it as a play in college theater in your town and somebody, some producer's kid happens to go to that college and they see the play, yeah, maybe it'll get made into a movie. Who knows? What I do know is that if you don't pursue this imagination and find a form for it, nothing else can happen. Okay, let's talk uh, about uh, your comments. Furthermore, if you really want the story to be authentic, collaborate with an indie director, maybe you can write the script together. And yes, and if you don't have it, you can make a powerful short film. Exactly. It can be a first step. You only learn screenwriting by writing. Absolutely. And also, a lot of people, honestly, they don't want to learn writing. They, got, they just got an idea. They just got a story in their head. And that's okay. Think about, maybe you want to do it as a series of paintings. Maybe you want to do it as a graphic novel. Who knows? Maybe you just want to... Write it down in whatever form you can. That's okay. Um, okay, let's go back. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy last name says they probably jack a lot of ideas at those types of pitch fests too. Um, that is, you know, this is so tricky. Ideas, the idea of alien, you know, that there's these people on a ship and, and there's a monster on board. Yeah, there's, there's 75 versions of that. The first one made the biggest splash. But, but it's essentially a, an idea that could, that has been told many ways. It's essentially, you know, a monster movie, a spooky story. It's, 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 it's not the idea. Um, it's the story, the story that you craft out of this idea. And maybe there's a, a hooky, twisty thing in it. Maybe there's an insight in it. But truthfully, there's, there are going to be other versions of that. Someone somewhere in history has done it or will do it. Okay. Um, Alex Burke says, when I want to look up how to develop my idea into a narrative, I look up the phrase flesh out. Is there a better term I should use? I find my blank, my mind is blank uh, those days. Um, I uh, honestly, I would say, look at my videos. I've done some really good videos on this. Okay. Uh, one of them, use what you have. Okay. This is a really good video uh, on this topic. Also, um, Process of questions. This is a really good video on that. Also, set pieces. Set. Um, this is a really good video to help you make your story, your idea into a story. Um, I would say start with me. <laughs> um, that's really my best advice. And then develop a story, how to write a story. I mean, the, you know, just keep looking. Um, if, if, if your search... Uh, if your search phrase is not working, just try others. You know, it's not going to cost you anything. Um, thank you, A-Link. I appreciate that. Um, Mike DeLuke used to give his guest an object and say, and say, tell a story about it. Yeah, um, yeah. He, Mike DeLuke is an interesting producer and a cool guy. Um, um, a way to break the ice in storytelling is to sit down with a recorder and just start talking like you are talking to someone or a kid. 
Um, listen and select, get away from the blank page intimidation. Yes, what's interesting about this is everyone is intimidated by different things. For some people, recording and having to hear their voice back um, is the worst. Or it, now there's voice to transcript, which is great. Just talk into it, have it transcribe it um, into words so you don't have to hear your own voice because it's not fun. I, I never watch these videos if I can help it. Um, but some people are intimidated by the blank page. So yes, try different things, which does bring us to a question that Helene asked um, a little while ago, which is about um, how wary should you be of telling others uh, the story you're writing? I would say this. I would say you should be wary for two reasons. One, and this is different for different people, but I believe um, if you talk it out too much and get too many bits of input, um, it tends to take away the momentum of writing it. So my personal feeling is don't talk too much about your ideas until it is in a form that you can already have written. Like I said, a three-page story summary that you can send to the Library of Congress and copyright. Then no one can steal it. I mean, if they steal it, you can sue them. Um, but, but, who are you telling? Like, here's the question. When you're saying, are you wary of what are you telling? If I tell the people I know, very few of them are screenwriters. Excuse me. They're not going to steal it. <laughs> um, they're not producers. They can't steal it. They, they don't know what to do with it if they steal it. In Hollywood, in, in the movie industry in America, in the movie industry anywhere, in any uh, arts industry, yes, if you are going around to other artists and people who produce things and telling them a story for free, um, you are risking having them take that. Yes, that is true. So don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Uh, if you want to talk to people, talk to people you trust personally to say, I am telling you a story because I'm working on it and I want your thoughts on it, but you know they're not, you know, you know them well enough to have them not steal it. Or have them have them be like, if they're, they work in a grocery store, they're, they're not going to steal your story because they can't sell it in the grocery store. So don't worry about it. Um, if you tell other artists or people who are in the arts business and you haven't put it into a form already or you haven't thought it out already, you need to make an agreement before you tell. Um, for instance, in a pitch meeting that is arranged by an agent, there is an agreement made by those companies not to steal each other's ideas. They still do it sometimes. It's not the worst thing in the world to have your ideas stolen. Most ideas are not original. Most ideas, it's the development of the idea that matters. So that's what I urge you to do is figure out what you think as best you can in a form that you can have written down and make a copy and send it to the Writers Guild registry or a copyright, and, and then you're fine. Then you are safe. Okay, let's see. Uh, so... Do you have any suggestions about writing comedy? I'm referring to stories like Small Time Crooks, About a Boy, Big Lebowski, <laughs> Shorty. Okay, let's just, Mario, those are radically different stories, okay? <laughs> um, Big Lebowski and Matilda, um, Get Shorty and, and About a Boy, these are drastic. I, Get Shorty is essentially a caper comedy. Uh, About a Boy is this beautiful relationship comedy, uh, which is essentially a sort of rom-com without the, the, the rom-com. Um, yeah, so anyway, I guess what I'm saying is my first suggestion about writing comedy is you just got to do a lot of it and you got to try it out on people. Comedy is, comedy is a matter of opinion and you have to, you, you, you do the best you can to be funny. But the main thing is um, uh, study the thing you like. Um, hold on. This one, this video, take art apart. All these videos that I'm referring to, I will put in, hold on, where is it? There, there, in the description, <laughs> in the description below here, uh, below this video, about 10 minutes after I stop recording this, I will put the links to these videos. Okay, so my, but my answer is, look at the ones you like. Like if you like Big Lebowski, figure out how it works. Take it apart, see, because basically it's a, random clutter of different ideas that they I was just talking to a writer friend and he was just like Big Lebowski you have to recognize it's just a shaggy dog story it's just it's just a a string of unrelated bits that are strung together with this detective thread um, whereas modern times or um, last action hero are heavily plotted um, with comedy sections 
Anyway, the answer is, my suggestion about writing comedy is study the kind of comedy you aspire to write. Understand how it works. Get that into your head. Um, okay. Yuli Zhang says, having a good idea is one thing. The effort and hard work to bring the good idea into reality is a completely different thing. A founder of a children's hospital. Um, so yeah, here's the deal. Um, what I liked about E's uh, initial question was respecting that, saying, look, I know I can't do all the work that takes to construct a script. It's stuff I haven't learned yet. It's stuff I haven't practiced yet. Uh, and it's stuff I can't do. Can't, don't, can't devote my years of my life to getting this done. The question then is, what do you do with a story if you can't do that? It's like saying, I want to found a children's hospital, um, but I don't, can't do all the work. The question is, well, what part of founding the hospital do you like to do? And can you do that? Can you volunteer at somebody else's hospital? Or in my case, I'm saying, if you have this idea, can you find a form to put it in, to express what you have, what you like about it, and then show it to people. And then you never know. You never know what you could do with it once you've gotten away from the idea of an idea, which is invisible brain waves, into a form. That's the most important thing. I'm going to show you these cards again because they're really, really important. Work out the heart of your story and find a form any form, any form. Do it as a series of haikus. Do it as a, a pantomime. Do it as a puppet show. But do something with your dream, with this imagined thing, um, and do it in a form and then see who you can show it to. Maybe that form will enter a film festival as a short, like Perkindy said. Maybe you'll do it as a puppet show and then make a video of it and put it on YouTube, and then you can sell that um, because that could be adapted into something else. My, my main point is don't think about going building a cathedral. Okay, Build, Making a movie is like building a cathedral. You need a lot of people and a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of experience. But you have an idea already. You have a, an imaginary thing in your head. See what, if you can't build a cathedral, maybe you could build a model cathedral out of popsicle sticks and glue. OK, that would still be well worth doing. You never know. It could be then that somebody in the cathedral business sees your model and says, "Ooh, let me buy the rights to that model. I'm going to use that to make a thing. That's possible, uh, much more possible than saying, I want to talk to them and tell them my idea and they'll make it. Um, that's the, the, the main thing. OK, um, ba -ba -ba -ba. so hello, Akio. Thank you. Happy New Year. No, no sir. No sir is required. Um, oh, and um, so Alex says, how do you personally define good taste and by extension bad taste? Ah, this is an interesting question because my answer would be ain't no such thing. <laughs> um, I mean, there. Are, I would define taste, um, good taste in the formal public sense. In other words, that there are things that are in the 21st century American uh, mode of, of judgment. I would say some people think these are good things and bad things. That's not my taste. Um, my answer would be taste is individual. Taste is personal. And therefore, what's good and bad is individual to people. And you would be amazed how much people don't like to admit that. But the truth is, um, what's happening is, if, if a big a group of people who are trying to make money <laughs> by selling something um, decide that this thing will offend good taste, therefore they don't do it. They are steering their audience's taste. Um, that does not mean it's actually good or bad. My answer would be, for many people, offending the bourgeoisie is good taste. It's, it's the value of art. Um, uh, and other people um, respecting classical Western European symmetries or conventions is good taste. Uh, me, I love it all. I really do. My taste is jam in as much stuff as I can get. Um, that's good taste to me. So I'm always kind of looking for where I can go to the new um, regions and also to, to, to understand what other people are doing. And then my own personal taste comes out in my work. Um, it, it tends to be um, narrative. 
It tends to be character based. It tends to be ensemble based. I like I like that. Um, you know, it then then you get into little weirdnesses of personality. My personal, you know, preference for you know characters who are kind of outsiders or losers or 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 people who have been in some way uh, ostracized. Um, that's but that's my taste. Um, okay, um, a link reminds you. Don't forget to hit that like button. All of ya. <laughs> Thank you, a link. Okay, Neil asks. Hey, Glenn. Thank you for the six essential questions. I have been stuck on an outline, and your video has helped me finally craft my main character. Yay! 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 That's great. Um, yeah, yeah. The six questions, and and also really, um, this one's really important for characters. Well, obviously this one, character. <laughs> but I was thinking more of this one, um, dramatic action. Dramatic action really helps a lot when you're stuck. Um, I know this sounds, it, it doesn't sound like it, but, but once you start thinking, what do they do? What is the story? That's when you start to uh, tell a story to me. Um, Pergany points out to Mario on the question of um, how do you write a comedy? Pay attention to the timing. Yes, I would definitely say that's true. Um, there are different styles, but but timing, I think that people don't understand timing. Timing isn't pace. It's not like music. It's like da 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 da. Timing is the back and forth between characters. Timing is the is the back and forth between the storytelling and the characters. Timing is relationships. That's what timing is in a in a narrative. Timing is how things are juxtaposed or or in response to each other. It's not actual rhythm. People mistake timing and they think, oh, fast or slow or whatever, that's timing. Timing is actually what it means in, in comedy and, and storytelling is more about the, the, the ways that people or things or the, the telling of the story responds to the other things, in my opinion. Um, okay. Hi, Matthew. Happy New Year. Um, okay. Um, Michael says, I did three drafts and countless reruns and still making changes. Yes, um, you keep working, you keep thinking. Okay, Mary. Hi, Mary Playford. I don't think uh, how to copyright your... Okay, um, uh, I kind of did somewhere already. I did a live stream about this, but, but here's the basic thing. Every nation has its own rules. So therefore, um, as an Aussie, as someone down under, um, I don't know. But I do know that we are on the internet. So right now, you can just go to your favorite search engine and, and, and whatever the copyright is, it's going to be very simple. There's going to be a form. It's going to be an online form. And they're going to require you to have a PDF um, or some recording form of your work. Um, if it's a movie or a, a play or something. Um, but usually, if it's written, it's a PDF. Um, they're going to, you're going to need to have a PDF. You're going to need to fill out a bunch of questions. They're going to be pretty easy. Like, did you write this alone? <laughs> and, and what's your name and address? Um, stuff like that. And then they're going to ask you to pay some money. And you put the form, uh, you put the, the copy of your material, um, and you put that, and you put it where they ask you, and you click the button, and you give them the money, and you've got a copyright. And then like six weeks to six months later, they'll send you a, a, a response that says, hey, we got it. We're good. You've, you've got a copyright. And then they'll ask for 75 years. That's what I know about copyright. That's it. Um, so you just, that was, that was the video. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, go to, like, for, uh, in America, I believe it's copyright.gov. Um, and hang on. I believe, let me just see if I can, yeah. Uh, yeah, here it is. Um, Copyright.gov is the U.S. Copyright Office, and WGA.org is the American Writers Guild website where you can register. Registering is not as legally binding as copyright, but it's pretty good. Uh, it's much less expensive. Same thing, though. You click on a button on right, WGA.org. It says, register your script. You click it. They say, what's your name and address? How can we reach you? Did you really write this? Can you give us a copy? Can you give us some money? And then you got it. <laughs> okay. Um, 
the idea isn't that important. Great films are made of dull ideas all the time. Um, to a certain extent, this is really true, I believe. Um, I've talked about this before. Um, what you do with an idea, yes, there are certain ideas. Here's a, let's put it this way. Great ideas have been made into lousy, lousy movies, and that's immensely painful and frustrating. Rather used up ideas, not bad ideas, but just ideas that have been used before can be still made great, depending on what you do with it. So that's my take. Um, so Mario says, I have analyzed about talking about comedies. Yes, they are different from each other. They have made me laugh and think about what their themes convey. Um, cool. Great. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, I, honestly, it's just one of those things. It's like, how do you write comedy? Just like you write anything, as far as I'm concerned. But different people feel differently. Some people feel that jokes are more important in comedy than character. Um, I believe character is... The, I believe that you, the same good writing, what I consider good writing, which is based in mostly in character, um, in character trying to accomplish things, in the stuff that I talk about all the time, that's going to apply to a comedy too. You're just going to do it in a funny way. <laughs> it's just that's my take on comedy. My and and this is, admittedly, I am a person who crosses over between comedy and drama often, and it was a problem in my career because people were like, "Well, are you a comedy writer or are you a drama writer?" I'm like, "I'm a person who does both," and I don't understand why you have a problem because to me, a comedy is just a funny drama, <laughs> and a drama is just a sad comedy. Um, that's that's me. Um, so therefore, you, that's the advice you're going to get from me is. There's no special magic about like, oh, this is the secret to comedy. Different people think different. Some people think that 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 having a cringy, humiliating, awful main character is the key to comedy. Other people, I often have a problem with that. So uh, I don't know. Um, Donna, who is also down under, is saying to Mary, you can email it to yourself, put a copyright symbol and year on your work. And there's uh, the Australian Writers Guild. Um, yes. Um, Cool, cool, great. Um, okay, so let's let's wind down. Your channel is amazing. Yay! Thank you. I am not in the industry. I'm a musician working on writing a musical. I love musicals, um, and I'm always amazed by how you manage to be. Oh, wow! So this is just a compliment. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'll take it. Um, uh, I appreciate that. I love musicals. Um, musicals are a magical, magical thing, um, and and I think that uh, underexplored. Um, so keep writing, keep keep working. That's great. Um, speaking of bad ideas, has anyone come up with one that you agree is bad? No, no. I have I have repeatedly made this challenge. Tell me what you think is an idea that is unworkable. I will try and show you how it's workable. How you can make a good story out of it. Um, taste is fashion, a societal thing. Um, in the sense of if you're talking about society's taste. In other words, if you're saying this agreed upon taste of a group of people is a definition of taste, I was talking about personal taste and therefore um, is not a societal thing. The, the point about um, social, to communal taste is that that tends to be defined by a couple of things. The first is there tend to be, quote, taste makers who are either figures who are popular or public and their choices are therefore paid attention to by other people who feel less confident or are less adventurous in their own taste, or the people who decide what will or will not get released to the public, the distributors, the curators. Um, so therefore, if you run a movie company and you don't like Westerns, that will change the taste because Westerns won't get made. Um, uh, we're in an interesting moment now, historically, when those tastemakers in culture have been um, diversified, broken up. There's uh, uh, less of a unified taste, um, partly because the world, the, the culture that I'm in um, is no longer the only culture. There's lots of different cultures. And because of, of digital technology and global communication, I know more about Korean and Japanese and African filmmaking than I ever would have known in the 20th century. You know, I could try to find out a good amount, but it wasn't that easy. Now it's just there. I can just go to the movies anywhere. I can read anything. I can read the newspaper for a small town on the other side of the world. Um, that changes the, um, the group deciding our culture. Um, and we still haven't figured out what to do about that. We, we still haven't figured out what that means. Is there a 
unified culture at all, or does everybody have their own culture depending on what they click on? Um, there isn't a proper answer to that. That's why I uh, suggest that you spend most of your time figuring out your own taste um, and, and trying to explore those who connect with it and trying to explore those who are in opposition to it to see like, oh, what do they have to offer? Maybe it's something I should know about. Uh, most of the comedy scripts I've read aren't funny on the page. Um, I don't know. I've read some. I mean, you know, that that's. Um, I I don't find that true. I mean, I, a bad, like a failed comedy. Yeah, it's not. Um, okay, the movie theater is called the Sphere. Fifty screen. Yeah. Oh, every show is sold out. That's interesting. I've heard about the Sphere. I don't know that much about it. I know that you two played there for a while. I know that people keep showing me pictures of the outside of it. Um, interesting. Wow. Uh, did did you go? Did it was it good? Okay, um, thank you, Alex. I appreciate it. Um, taste makers, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yep. Comedy and drama. Thank you, <laughs> Professor. You're welcome. Um, listen, it's been an hour. I think I'm going to stop, uh, but I'll be back next week. I think next week I'm going to talk about my novel. Let's see how it's going. Um, but in the meantime, thank you so much. I think I answered all the big questions. Let me just check. I, I captured some stuff here. Um, bo -bo -do, bo -bo -do. Okay. Yeah, that's good. We're done. <laughs> we are done. We made it. We made it through another. I will see you next week. Go write something.